Welcome back everyone, Michael with Offshore Citizen and today we're going to talk about the top 10 tax havens of 2020 and at the end I'm going to do one for Americans. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all just to set some context to these tax havens, the thing that I want to emphasize here is this is referring to places you're going to live. Okay, so we have some other videos on, I mean, the zero tax countries in the world. We have some about the zero tax uh, countries from the perspective of corporate tax. And the truth is you can live in a lot of places and still pay very low tax if you have a proper corporate structure. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through here that this is a list of places you may want to move. They're selected with the idea in mind that they are reasonable to move, meaning that you know, quality of life is not total trash. You're going to notice I exclude a bunch that uh, you could actually, in theory, go to and have zero tax, uh, but you probably don't want to go live there, or uh, that you may not want to move to because it's very difficult to move there. All right, so we're kind of factoring in all those things, and we're looking based on what are the rules here in 2020 right now. As I sit here, it is May something. I'm not so great on uh, being on top of the dates, but I don't know, somewhere around May 19th, May 20th, 2020. And so let's get into it. The first place that is arguably the top easy, it, it's easy to live in, meaning that you can easily get residency there. It has zero tax, uh, very like straightforward zero tax, and it's quite livable, is UAE. Okay, so UAE, for a long time, we avoided it in our international structuring because it was simply too expensive. That started to change maybe around like 2016 or so. Uh, we started to look at it more as more aggressive rules started to come in, as it was more difficult to structure elsewhere, as banking become more, became more of an issue, etc. Sometime around 2016, 2017. And I would argue that as Dubai in particular has increasingly improved uh, in, in terms of what it offers to the people who live there, and you know other places have gotten more aggressive, it has become an increasingly attractive place to move uh, for the perspective of tax, okay? So Dubai is our number one. From Dubai, we're gonna go to Southeast Asia. We're gonna go over number two is Thailand, all right? Now Thailand, it's also easy to get residency and there's a little bit of a, a quirky thing that happens here. Some people call me about it quite often. You can get something called the Thai Elite Visa. Okay, the Thai Elite Visa allows you to be resident there, you know, depending on, basically you pay a fee per year. And so it's something that uh, a lot of people will kind of play around with. Are you tax resident there? Is it simply residency without tax residency? And that's like a, a issue. If you have questions about it, contact us. I'm happy to discuss it with you and explain how to make it work for your situation because it does depend on where it is you're from. It can play into tax treaties and things like this, but potentially it's a very, very good option. It's certainly the easiest visa to get and live in Thailand. And so what's the situation with Thailand? Well. Thailand allows you, so long as you have a foreign company, if you don't remit the dividends in that year, you send them to yourself the second year, uh, you can pay no tax on it, all right? So a lot of people would like to live in Thailand. There's, you know, obviously good weather. Bangkok offers a lot, although it's, you know, filthy and chaotic. So, you know, there's a bit of a trade-off there. Uh, but it's an easy residency to get. It's easy to be zero tax. And so because of that, uh, and, and it's fairly like it offers a lot, so because of that, it is our number two for 2020. This brings us to number three, which is Malaysia. Okay, so Malaysia, I'll probably do a whole program on it because I'm a big Malaysia fan, but there's basically three different paths to being a resident in Malaysia. They are Malaysia, my second home. There is, uh, you can be a director of a company uh, or you can, there's something called MTEP, the Malaysia Tech Entrepreneur Program. So any of these three are your typical paths to residency in Malaysia and there's pros and cons to each of them. The important thing to note is, again, dividends are tax-free in Malaysia, uh, and there's no CFC rules. So this combination means that potentially you can end up in a situation where you can receive uh, foreign income tax-free. Now, if you have local income, it's still okay because you could have a, a Labuan company. And so it's one of the more workable places. If I compare it, there's a, what you're gonna see as we go through here is a lot of countries it's not that there's zero tax, but it's that they tax only foreign, or sorry, only local income. And as a result, that makes them sort of attractive. But from that standpoint, uh, often there's a lot of, if you're gonna be involved somehow in your company and things like this, it doesn't really work that well for you, okay? So that's what we'll look at there. So that was number three. 
we're gonna go from there all the way around, uh, I guess you can go either way around the world, probably across the Pacific, uh, and into Panama, all right? So Panama is number four. Now, there's some pros and some cons of Panama. Again, Panama is a place that's quite easy to get residency. It's gotten a lot of attention for quite a while. In theory, it's not zero tax, but they have a territorial tax system. Now, again, people kind of misstate how that territorial tax system actually works, but in practice, they're not particularly aggressive about enforcing it uh, on foreigners who come there. And so there's some ways you can use that to effectively pay zero tax. Now, Panama got a lot of bad press uh, due to the Panama Papers, and that's kind of thrown some, some issues on it. It's also not quite as straightforward, like, it's a very bureaucratic country, so there's some documentation that you have to go through that's maybe more of a hassle than some places such as UAE. And then a lot of people would argue that, you know, well, it's, you know, perhaps one of the most livable of the Latin American countries, meaning that it has a lot of infrastructure and things like this, that it's not at the same level as some place like Dubai, right? So you can, get, there's a lot to be said for personal preference. Some people would say that they much prefer the weather in Panama to places like Thailand, Malaysia, and UAE. Certainly it's more what I would call temperate. That part of the world in general is pretty good most of the year round, just like Costa Rica and so on and so forth. But, you know, play it as you will. It's quite easy to become resident. You don't have to spend a huge amount of the year there. In fact, you hardly have to spend any time there really at all in order to remain a residency permit. Although for tax residency purposes, you may not want to, or you may, you may need to, or you may want to. And yeah, it's, it's a perfectly reasonable place to go to pay quite low tax, all right? Okay, let's go across the world now. From there, that was our number four, we're going to our number five, which is Malta, okay? So Malta is an interesting one. I don't see a lot of people moving to Malta, and the reason is probably it's really small and kind of isolated. So in general, what you'll notice is I've excluded uh, the typical island nations from this list. Although in theory, if you if you want to go and move to places like Bahamas and Cayman Islands and Bermuda and things like this, okay, those might be an option. But the challenge with it, and you know, there's a reasonable residency program, say in Bahamas, but the, the challenge is there's just not much going on, right? It's very, very small. Malta is also very small and, you know, not much going on. The difference here is you're very close to Europe and so you have pretty good accessibility. I was actually just looking at flights to Malta. I'm in Bulgaria today. I was looking at flights to Malta uh, yesterday. And so, you know, it's, uh, my wife has some, some family there and so we're gonna go later on this year. And, you know, you have, again, amazing climate. Uh, depending on where you're from, it can be harder or less hard to move to. So one of the reasons why it's really appealing is for anyone from the European Union, it's really easy to move to. If you're not from the European Union, it's a little more challenging. Uh, but still uh, quite reasonable. Again, it's a pretty bureaucratic place. Here, depending on your type of income, you may or may not have actual zero tax. So basically the way that it works is, uh, first of all, they've got, uh, well, their, their biggest thing is they have what's called a remittance-based tax system for those who are resident but non-DOM, okay? So non-DOM is essentially, in this case, not citizens, okay? And as a result, if you don't remit funds to Malta, uh, there's kind of this, quasi remittance slash territorial uh, system that takes place for these people. And so as a result, you can very often end up with uh, quite low tax. Now they do typically, again, depending on the residency program you're in and things like this, they'll have a, uh, a regime that gives you, oh, what do you call it? Uh, a minimum tax, right? So it's not necessarily gonna be tax free for you. It, it, it just depends on your circumstances. So again, with all of these, you know, you can subscribe to our videos. In fact, that's a good time to do that right now. Subscribe to the video, uh, or subscribe to the channel rather, like the video if you're on it. And uh, you can reach out to us and we're happy to discuss with you what's best for you. I'm going through kind of the top 10 today, but the reality is there's, you know, probably another 10 options that are reasonable to look at. And, you know, we're happy to help you figure out what's gonna be best in your situation. So anyway, that's Malta. You can get a program, especially from if you're from uh, the EU, I think it's a pretty reasonable place to look. From here, we're gonna go over into another part uh, in Europe, but not in the EU. And we're gonna talk about another one that's, people don't normally go there, but uh, I think there's a lot of advantages to it, which is Andorra, okay? Now, Andorra is interesting. They, they created a tax, uh, but they have, uh, you can get basically tax-free, uh, tax-free investment income potentially, and there's a particular investor visa. So 
the quality of life is quite good there. It is quite removed. So if you're not familiar, Andorra is a very small country between Spain and France. And so it's on the border there. One of the interesting things is there's no like border checks, so you can go in and out quite easily. And so that's a factor. Now, in reality, they do have the ability to tell whether you're in the country or not, and they want you to spend ideally three months there. However, in practice, you can, you know, it's somewhat, somewhat flexible. And it used to be that Andorra was a big banking center until Banca Privada was taken down for involvement with Venezuelans and all this kind of thing. Uh, that was that was a big thing. So Andorra is one other place that I've had some people interested. I, I find that, again, people don't move there that often because it's a quiet place, right? We're talking about a small population. It's great if you like to go skiing. It's great if you like nature. And it's great if you want that easy access to Spain and France, but not so wonderful if you're looking for kind of big city life and so on and so forth. So let's see here. What are we at? I think that's our number six, right? Uh, yeah, that should be number six. So, all right, moving from number six to our number seven, we are talking about Spain and people are probably going, Spain, what are you talking about? If Spain is a high tax, horrible country to be in. We're gonna talk about Spain in part because of the fact that the quality of life in Spain is really good, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of people who like to live in Marbella, Malaga, uh, Barcelona, like, Spain is a great country. It's probably one of the top places I recommend people visit from kind of a tourist standpoint. There's a lot of me that would say, hey, look, like I would consider living in Spain. The weather is obviously good. You have the ocean. It's a very diverse country. It's large enough with a big enough population base. There's a lot, there's a lot of services, things like this. Uh, but unfortunately, the tax rules are horrible and you know they're, uh, they're crazy in a bunch of regards. But they have a particular program that is little known called La Ley Beckham. And La Ley Beckham is, uh, it's a six year program. So you can't be there permanently, but for six years, you can take advantage of it. And it's if you have to move there for the purposes of your company. So there's, a, there's some nuances to how it gets set up. Obviously, you could probably tell from the term Beckham that it was set up in order to attract uh, and allow these football stars to move there to participate in playing football, soccer, for those of you in North America. And, you know, they basically wanted to attract these athletes. The athletes didn't want to go because of the tax system. So they said, okay, well, we're going to give you this six year window that uh, under the circumstance, uh, certain circumstances, the income will not be taxable. So what ends up happening under this program is you have a company, you pay yourself a wage, you do pay taxes on that wage, but then your foreign income is not taxable. And so you're treated a little bit like a non-resident in that regard. And so I think because of the fact that Spain is just such an attractive part of the world to live in that it is a program that is worth considering and something worth looking at. So from there, that was our number seven, we're gonna go over to the next one, which is kind of similar. And I did put Spain ahead of it because of some recent changes, which is Portugal. So once again, you know, if we consider places that people might actually want to live, right? Lisbon, quite reasonable city. A lot of people are, are liking, it's kind of cool, it's kind of hip. Uh, it's a little small for me personally. Uh, also there's Porto, right? So, you know, but generally you've got good weather, you have relatively good quality of life. And so a lot of people like to live there and there's something called the non-habitual residency regime. So again, Portugal is not a zero tax or even a low tax country, but if you can take advantage of the non-habitual residency regime, that's a 10 year program, then, you know, you can, uh, you can go that way and you can say, okay, well, this is, this is decent. So, okay, like not a bad option really. Uh, for some people. Now, the thing about the non-habitual residency program is that it allows you to get a bunch of different types of foreign income uh, tax-free, in particular dividends, okay? So that's usually why you'd be interested in living there. Local income is, ta you can get taxed at a favorable rate. It's nothing outstanding. You can basically get a 20% tax rate, but it's really about the ability to earn, to get that foreign income. It's typically been used by pensioners and, uh, and people who are from, you know, a, own business. Now, the key there, and the thing that's a little bit quirky, is they have uh, a blacklist on their CFC rules, okay? Now, I haven't seen this enforced, and if you go and talk to various lawyers, you'll hear totally conflicting opinions on it. The truth is, any lawyer who tells you one way or the other is not being, they're being a little bit disingenuous. And the reason is that the law is not clear, okay? There is, under statute, it's not clear how it's treated, and on top of that, you're in a situation where there is, uh, 
uh, no, no case law. So because of that, we're not really sure how that's going to play out. So it does require proper tax planning. And they just, they modified the rules to make them slightly better, but also slightly worse uh, just in 2019. And so anyway, if it's something that you're interested in, contact us and we'll go through with you how you want to structure your company, where you want to structure it. Unfortunately, some of the traditional places like Hong Kong are on the blacklist. Actually, like a lot of the places that you might typically want to use are on the blacklist. And so it's a little bit uh, dicey depending on what you have set up, but it is attractive to a bunch of people. Uh, it's very close to, again, Spain, etc., And so it's a decent place. Okay, this brings us to our last two. And I'm gonna give kind of two contrasting ones here. Uh, I'll throw out a few more at the end that you might just kind of brainstorm on. But the next one that we're gonna talk about is Chile. Okay, now again, Chile is kind of a new one. It's a place that I don't hear a lot of people wanting to go to. Uh, there's some other different groups who talk about Santiago and they appreciate this. In Chile, you can get a three year, uh, basically tax exemption when you go there. It's quite easy to get residency. We get a lot of people who are, quite in, are uh, inquiring about moving to Latin America for whatever reason. And so that's, you know, worth considering, right? Something uh, something to keep in mind. There might be some reason that if that's kind of your part of the world, you may want to go check that out. And it's, you know, you can potentially pay zero tax for three years. Again, we can talk about the details uh, if, when you contact us. This brings us to our last one. And I wanted to mention it because it's new and because again, a lot of people would like to live there. Now it's not some place that you typically are going to find uh, is amazing for you if you're a low income earner. So part of the reason I put this one way down is because it's great if you earn a really high income and you want to live there. And that is Greece. Okay, so Greece has a new program. And in this program, you basically pay a flat tax of 100,000. Uh, and you know, 100,000 is pretty, pretty hefty, right? Like, I mean, let's be honest, I'm in Bulgaria today, if you were, let's say living in uh, well, Bulgaria, let's say that you had a million dollars a year, you could pay lower taxes in Bulgaria, you could potentially pay as low as 5% uh, than Greece. On the other hand, a lot of people would prefer to live in Greece, you know, obviously you have the weather, you've got, you know, there's a certain culture that people really like in Greece, uh, not all people, but you know, certain types of people. Uh, there's the islands, they're beautiful, you could buy property, things like this. So Greece is an interesting one if you're a very high income earner. If you consistently know that you're going to make, you know, mid seven, to eight figures, right? We've got some clients who they're pretty consistent in the seven and eight figure range. Well, then it might be worth, and you want to live in that space, it might be worth it for you. Even if you were, you know, kind of high six figures, you might find that, hey, look, balancing everything out, this is worthwhile for you. And so, you know, it's, it's totally up to you. Some other places that people would often look at would be places like Cyprus, Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, maybe San Marino. San Marino is an interesting place for Italians. We have a video on it. Uh, you might look at Bulgaria. You might look at Montenegro. These are kind of some of the common ones that a person could probably move to fairly easily. They might like it from a from a tax standpoint. Okay, but I'm going to give you the the one that we would talk about for Americans because most of these don't really work that well for Americans. Uh, if you're a very low income earner and you want to go live in one of these places, it can be great. Uh, by low income earner, I mean less than 100,000 a year. Uh, so long as you're under 100,000 a year, you can take advantage of what's called the foreign earned income exclusion. And so no problems for you there. In fact, you could really, you know, probably within like 100 to 150,000, it might make a lot of sense for you as an American, okay? But the real out for Americans is Puerto Rico. If I was an American, uh, there's a good chance I would go and live in Puerto Rico just because they have separate tax rules that you can potentially pay zero tax on certain income. You can have a business that pays basically four and a half percent tax. And there's just nowhere equivalent for Americans. What's that's resulted in is you've had a lot of people move there. who are pretty cool entrepreneurial, a lot of people from the crypto space, things like this. So I think there's a really interesting community in Puerto Rico. And then if you add to that, the fact that, you know, you are in America, so you have you know, a lot of what goes along with that. It's an island, but you know, there's 4 million people. So it's not like it's a tiny island. There's, you know, quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of stuff going on there, 4 million. I might have that slightly over. Anyway, whatever the, whatever the number is, the point is that it's definitely, uh, definitely got a bunch to offer. Cost, certain types of costs can be low. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something to consider. There's a lot of uh, domestic US tax strategies too. We have a video, uh, a video on that, I believe. And so if you're interested in finding out more, 
contact us, you can book a call on www.clarity.fm or you can go to our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com and please subscribe, hit the like button, share this. If you have videos you'd like to see, put it in the comments. If you think I missed something major or you have one that you know you think really stands out, comment it and I will see you guys on the next video.